All right, Nathan, thanks. New at noon, Arkansas has reported its first two COVID related child deaths this morning. Here's what we know so far. The first death was actually reported to the Department of Health at the end of last year, but it took some time for officials to confirm that to confirm that I should say we're still working to find out when the second death happened. ADH has not released the children's ages. They can only tell us that they were under 18 years old. Stay with THV 11 and THV 11.com for the latest on this developing story. For the first time in months, Arkansas is averaging more than a thousand new COVID-19 cases each day. Let's take a look at the latest numbers this afternoon. Looking at this chart, you can see that the average is starting to climb there in late June and eventually surpasses 1000. Based on the latest numbers, we're moving in the wrong direction. 1459 new cases came in Wednesday and our active cases now sit just below 11,500. We also saw a pretty significant jump in deaths over the last 24 hours. We have 13 more fatalities to report this afternoon, bringing the total to 6,020. And the trend that has state health officials on edge are growing hospitalizations. 848 people are now fighting the virus from a hospital bed. That is 33 more than this time yesterday. And as cases and hospitalizations surge here in Arkansas, Pulaski County leaders are urging lawmakers to reconsider a new law that bans governments from enacting mask mandates. They've sent a letter to the governor asking him to call a special session in hopes of stopping Act 1002 from taking effect next month. It says in part, having followed medically informed protocols, there was reason to believe that when it came to COVID-19, our state was going in the right direction. As with most things in this pandemic, however, nothing is certain. And since the legislature recessed in April, circumstances in our state have altered dramatically. The letter is just the latest attempt to block the new law. Several parents are expected to file a lawsuit later this week, asking a judge to overturn before the start of the new school year. You can learn more about that effort right now on THV11.com. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky said the Delta variant is the most effective respiratory virus or one of the most effective respiratory viruses she has ever seen in her medical career. But health officials say the biggest threat is to those who remain unvaccinated and kids under 12 who are not yet eligible to get the shot. Skyler Henry has the latest from the White House. The White House coronavirus response team says the Delta variant continues to pose a big threat to unvaccinated Americans. We are yet at another pivotal moment in this pandemic, with cases rising again and some hospitals reaching their capacity in some areas. During a CNN town hall last night, President Biden said the increased number of coronavirus cases may lead to mask mandates for kids returning to the classroom this fall. The CDC is going to say that what we should do is everyone over the age of under the age of 12 should probably be wearing a mask in school. That's probably what's going to happen. However, White House officials say there are no changes planned for the CDC's current recommendations that fully vaccinated adults don't have to wear masks. If you're unvaccinated, you should absolutely be wearing a mask. If you're vaccinated, you have exceptional levels of protection from that vaccine, and you may choose to add an extra layer of protection by putting on your mask, and that's a very individual choice. House Republicans held a press conference Thursday morning calling for their constituents to get vaccinated, including Congressman Steve Scalise, who got his first shot last week. With the Delta variant, I felt I wanted that extra level of pre uh, protection. The latest CDC numbers show a slight rise in vaccination rates over the last week. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Oh. Also in Washington this afternoon, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy are holding their weekly press conferences today amid a showdown of the January 6th commission. Representative McCarthy says he will pull all five of his picks to serve on the select committee investigating the assault on the Capitol if Speaker Pelosi does not rescind her rejection of two of his recommendations. Natalie, Natalie Brand reports from Capitol Hill. Just days ahead of the first scheduled hearing for the select committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack, the bipartisan panel is at risk of falling apart. It isn't even bipartisan, it's nonpartisan. 
It's about seeking an, uh, the truth, and that's what we owe the American people. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Wednesday rejected Pelosi two of GOP leader Kevin McCarthy's picks, Indiana's Jim Banks and Ohio's Jim Jordan, two outspoken allies of former President Trump. This is impeachment round three for the Democrats. Speaker Pelosi cited the integrity of the investigation in announcing her decision. When statements are ridiculous and fall into the realm of a uh, you must be kidding. There's no way that they're going to be on the committee. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is accusing Speaker Pelosi of an abuse of power and has threatened to pull all five of the representatives he chose to serve on the committee. House Democrats must answer this question. Why are you allowing a lame duck speaker to destroy this institution? This is the people's house, not Pelosi's house. McCarthy said Republicans would conduct their own investigation. Meanwhile, Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney, the one Republican appointed by Speaker Pelosi, defended Pelosi's decision. The rhetoric around this from the minority leader and from those two members has been disgraceful. Uh, this must be an investigation that is focused on facts. Democratic committee members say they plan to move forward with their first scheduled hearing next Tuesday. They expect testimony from law enforcement officers who were there when a violent mob tried to prevent the certification of the presidential election. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. After four days of waiting, the Razorbacks finally have their chance to get behind the podium at this year's SEC Media Days. THV 11's Hayden Balgavy is there live in Hoover, Alabama, joins us with more. Hey, Hayden. Michael, we've been waiting and waiting really four days all week long for the Razorbacks to finally get here and they have the Hogs arriving here in Hoover about nine o'clock this morning as they get ready to hit the podium and talk to not just us, the local guys, but all throughout the Southeastern Conference against Sam Pittman. This is his first trip ever to SEC Media Days. Remember, there was no event last year because of COVID-19, but there's been a lot of conversation already this morning. The guys are currently going through that SEC Media Days circuit, but we got to meet with them a little beforehand, and a big topic of conversation was, of course, name, image, and likeness, and anytime you bring that up, you got to remember that the entire offensive line, as we've talked about, has a barbecue deal. Needless to say, their head coach, he had He's a little jealous. I wish I did. They didn't give me one because obviously I don't need one. But uh, no, I was, you know, I told the team on that. I'm so excited that the offensive line got that deal. If I, if I had it my way, the whole damn team would have it. It's pretty good. I mean, considering uh, our past struggles of gaining weight, uh, I don't think that'll be a problem anymore. But uh, no, it's, it's been good. Cunningham is going to have to worry about losing any weight anytime soon. Again, we're just getting started here in Hoover on a beautiful Thursday in central Alabama. The Hogs still talking to all the media. We are going to hear from them about what a fun day this has been coming up tonight on THV 11 at 5 and 6. You can also hear from them on THV 11.com.